Tennessee fans, what's up? And welcome to another episode of Barton Makes Picks. That's Barton Simmons. I'm Trey Scott. Today we're going to go game by game, week by week. Mm -hmm. And Barton's going to tell you guys what's in store in year two of the Jeremy Pruitt era. What do you think Tennessee fans would be satisfied with? I think they want to at least make a bowl game. And I, some people are saying like nine wins. Okay. We, we're, in, we're in Nashville. Right. We're in ball country. We'll see what happens. Oh, hype swirling. Let's see. Let's see if they're satisfied. The with The schedule what this... I hear is manageable. Is it? Yes. Right, Georgia let's... State in Week One. Let's find out. Okay. Well, that is certainly manageable. Yeah. They will win that game, in fact. So you're one and zero to start the season. So now you're probably going to tell me BYU is a tougher test than most Vol fans are thinking. That is true. No. Oh. A good point. No, I, I do think it. I mean, I, I, look, BYU switched quarterbacks last year and became a different team. They were turning pretty much everybody. Uh, fortunately, this is not in Provo. This is in Knoxville. For that reason, I'm going to give B, uh, Tennessee the win here. But, hey, I don't sleep on that game now, ball fans. Yeah, well, 2-0. Tennessee's returning a lot, too. I love the toughness of quarterback Jared Guarantano. Uh, UT Chattanooga. Let's go 3-0. Oh, yeah. All right. And that's a nice schedule headed into a game at Florida. Yeah, and, and as good as Florida was last year, uh, it's clear that Dan Mullen inherited a program that is further along sure. than Tennessee's. So – how big of a step back is Florida going to have this year? Maybe, you know, they've revamped their offensive line a little bit. They've got some big-time players leaving on defense. And how big of a step forward is Tennessee going to have this year? I don't think that they meet in the middle quite yet. I still think Florida's ahead. Uh, this early in the season, the Gators win, particularly with that being in the, in the swamp. Three and one, you got to buy Georgia. <laughs> Not this year. Okay. Not this year. Three and two. Mississippi State, and I – went. Real quick, Barton, when we talk about Tennessee and identity, I think it's clear Jeremy Pruitt is instilling toughness. Do you expect the run game maybe to start to take off now? Yeah, I mean, it's all about the offensive line. I mean, it may have two bookend offensive tackles that are true freshmen, um, and, and maybe that's Trey good Smith and bad. Back. Maybe yeah. Trey Smith comes back. That'd be huge. Uh, but if those true freshmen are good, if Trey Smith is back and healthy and is anything like what he looked like as a freshman, that could mean – uh, huge strides. And I do like the backs that they've got in the backfield. And I like the receivers. I mean, there's a lot of pieces here. But I think Mississippi State, probably better than most Tennessee fans realize, that's a tough cross-division game. I think Mississippi State wins this. Strong analysis and a strong segue. Three and three at Bama. Talk about it's been a tough long cross-division game. <laughs> yeah, for this one on the schedule every year. Uh, hey, no. Yeah. Not, not going to happen yet. this year. Yeah. Oh, are you guaranteeing the next year? At South or no, not not at South Carolina. You're hosting South Carolina now. At three and four. I feel like they really need this. This one. is a must win. Yeah. Uh, not must win, but this is certainly a game they're gonna want to have, especially after that little stretch they've just they've just been on. But man, coming off of an Alabama game, mm -hmm. you're gonna get pretty beat up. There's that classic Alabama hangover that a lot of teams experience. South Carolina's gotta have this too. I mean, South Carolina may have the toughest schedule in the country. So, I think South Carolina, back against the wall, actually wins this one. Yikes. Yikes. Three and five. <laughs> I'm invested. Uh, UAB. Hey, <laughs> this is a good team. This is a good team, but I think Tennessee Surely. wins. Surely. Okay. That, that marks their first win going to four and five since uh, September All at right. Kentucky. Let's see if we can close strong here. Yeah, let's okay. close strong. I need to. All right, <laughs> okay. at Kentucky. All right, hang tight we're here. We're going to lose some viewers. Hang tight here. Yeah, we're at Kentucky, a team that won 10 games last year. This will be a, a different team this year. They're trying to throw it around. Yeah, apparently. Hey, bring it on. We'll, we'll, we'll take that if we're Tennessee. Uh, I think Tennessee wins. Here. That young tennis, Tennessee secondary could turn into a really good uh, positional unit. Uh, by week at 5-5, five and five, Let's we can go bowling here, guys. At Missouri. Yeah. Uh, not a team that Tennessee fans are used to seeing Tennessee lose to, but Missouri's really good. Their defensive line is stacked. Kelly Bryant is, is coming and, and is going to be a quality starter at quarterback. Uh, they've got a great culture there. Again, um, uh, I think that Barry Odom has instilled a culture there that is going to really rise up this year. Big year for Missouri coming. I think they win. And they really want that Tennessee game because Barry, Barry Odom threw uh, shots at Jeremy Pruitt for trying to take all of his players via the transfer portal. All right, so at 5-6, and six, another game against Vanderbilt that will yet again decide bowl eligibility. And Tennessee's lost the last three. Yeah. And so I think Tennessee's motivated. They didn't care last year. Tennessee showed up, and Vanderbilt wanted it more. If Vanderbilt's coming in at 5-6, and six, Tennessee's coming in at 5-6, and six, uh, I think this is a different team that Tennessee has with a little more pride 
and a little bit more culture behind them. I think Tennessee wins. Close it strong. Six and six going bowling. You'll take it.